Hello, beautiful people. How are you all? I'm being more cognizant of the words that I say. I love these sparkles on this filter and in my eyes. They look like snake eyes. Um, I'm being more cognizant of what I say because my boyfriend um, picked something up. He said that I often say, how are you? Like, hi, how are you? And I don't actually, it's just something that I say without thinking about it. Even if I don't, I'm not really interested in having a conversation with that person, I will say it to restaurant attendants or any anybody you know that I'm saying hello to and so I've become more cognizant of saying hi how are you because it's just a pattern that I'm in but I'm really interested to know how you are um hi Jeff hi Gifot 2010 um I'm back um it's so great to be here I've actually had a kind of a really rough few months um, and I haven't been so prominent going live, doing videos or creating content. There was, a, there was a stage where I was writing every single day and posting and sharing and I had like 10 programs going on at once and it was all perfect for the time. Um, but over the last few months, I haven't felt like that at all and I've kind of been in my own little nest, nesting. And there's been some great things birthing it's just that I was not ready to um, vocalize them. I didn't even know how to vocalize them and some of it is still coming through. I actually have, um, I'm in my bathroom, I really love my bathroom, but I have posters all over the walls with just things that have been coming through me over the last few days that have been um, kind of been an incubation period for the last few months and now I'm starting to vocalize them and getting them down on paper and I'm really excited for what I'm going to create for you guys that is going to be coming soon. It is coming out of me, but I, I know not to push it. And um, it's really important for me that I only create what feels kind of effortless and feels beyond beyond me. I'm, co I'm also aware that I, I don't want to sound cliche, but um, I, I really, I really believe that these great ideas and that they, they're not ours and they come through us. And so I'm cleaning myself out as much as I can, um, my mindset and my body and the old programs and the beliefs so I can become this, um, clear channel for whatever wants to come through me. There is a great story that you might have heard before, but I, I want to share it with you because it's so beautiful. There was a, and I might butcher it, I'll, I'll make up my own as I go. There was a great king and he wanted to have his castle painted. And the rest of the, 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 rest of the world were very excited by this, to be in this king's, to, to, ha to be able to showcase their artistic abilities because this king was very well known and he was very well known for his taste. And so the Greek and the, the Greeks and the Chinese came to him and both proposed that they would paint his kingdom and they would make it the most beautiful kingdom in the world. And he king said to them, okay, how about what we do is each of you will have a room to paint. And then from there, I will choose the most beautiful room and that and, and then you, that country, the um, representatives of that country will paint, be able to paint my kingdom. And then it'll be on show for the rest of the world and you'll be able to show what great artists and craftsmen you are. So the Chinese went away and they got all these, they came, they came back with all these beautiful paints and brushes and gold and silver and the Greeks, had nothing. The king was curious, but he did not peek behind the curtains. There was this curtain that divided the two the two rooms, and then there was a door to this to this room, and the king stayed behind the door. And weeks passed, and finally, with all this anticipation, the Greeks the Greeks came out and said, We are we are finished. And the Chinese came out and said, We are finished. And so the king was very excited 
and he went in to see the Chinese room, room first. He opened the door of the room, pulled the curtain, and he saw the most magnificent pieces of artwork, these incredibly detailed paintings with gold and silver. It was so magnificent, he didn't even breathe. It was a big inhale. And he was so bedazzled by what he saw in front of him and he thought, he said, oh my God, how, how could there be anything more beautiful than this? And he was already, he had already chosen the Chinese. He thought, okay, you know, I will check the Greeks room. So he pulled the curtains to the room that the Greeks had painted. And what he saw was a reflection of what the Chinese had painted. And this reflection had, moment, had movement in it. It had transience in it. It was alive. The Greeks had cleaned the walls, these white walls. They painted the walls white and cleaned them so well that they reflected what the Chinese had painted. And this was even more beautiful than the Chinese's artworks itself. It was the reflection. And this is what I want to become, like this clean white wall so that I can be a reflection for the beauty that is around me and inside of me. There is, you know, something that I, I've really come to realize that it's not about gaining more, gaining more knowledge, gaining more even for our health. It's not about putting more vitamins and minerals in us. It's often actually, it's an unbecoming, it's a letting go, it's a clearing and it's a cleaning. I will talk about health for a moment because it's so relevant to this actually. People often say that they need more of this or need more of that and so they will take supplements. And often what it actually is, is that it's an absorption problem because they're so backed up because they don't do cleanses, they don't clean their colons out. And so they just become so backed up that they're not absorbing what they're putting into their bodies. And in fact, you know, when you when you see when you start to go into the world of fasting, you know, there are incredible accounts of people fasting for over forty days, and their vitamins, that their their, um, their blood work with their iron B twelve vitamin C goes up. How is that possible when you're not consuming anything? How is it possible? that in fact you have more of this. I think this is a great telling point that we have everything we need inside of us and it's just a matter of cleaning it out. You know, the Buddhists say that um, enlightenment is here already, right in front of us and we are like, a, we, we are the window. We are the, we are the crystal clear window. But all that's on us is some muck and some dust and some dirt, maybe for some of us, a lot of that. And it's not that our window is not clean and clear. That's still that that's there. The glass is clean and clear. It's just the stuff that's on top of it. And it just needs to be wiped off. And in, you know, that this in Buddhism and all actually most of the, um, most of these teachings in Taoism as well, it's a matter of realization. It's not even an action that needs to be done to clean it off. It's just a matter of realizing. But for many of us, me included, um, it helps a lot to actually help ourselves to clean this stuff off our window. And that comes from firstly, cleaning the body out and realizing that we don't get our energy from food. Of course, in this day and age for, for, for us, we need food. We're used to it. It's, it's, um, our body is not in a state where we cannot have it. There are breath areas who exist, and it is not. It, it is. It is not a. Um, they're not some mythical creature. They actually exist. There's one guy in in Ubud. He lived in Ubud, and now he he doesn't live there anymore. He travels around as a as a, a, a spiritual guide. His name is Victor Truviano, and he has not eaten anything or had anything to drink for ten years. And you might say, that's crazy. He's a liar. Maybe, maybe that's what you want to believe. Um, and that's what you believe because that's what you've been programmed to believe. 
Just like it's also a belief that many of us have that we don't want to get old. Why would we not want to get old? Because we have the belief that when we get old, we will be sick, we will be frail. But the Taoists, they say that is not true. And now science, modern science is catching up with this and actually telling us that aging is a disease. And, but we are born with this idea that we get old, we see our grandparents get sick, get frail, have dementia, and we believe that's what we're going to be like. So we think, oh my God, I don't want to live until I'm, in, until I'm old. I want to die young. So I don't need to be looked after. So I don't need to go into an old age home. And we already put that belief in us that that is our future. And the vision that we hold in terms of where we are going, that is what is brought into reality. That is what is brought into fruition. So what are you holding in mind as absolute truth? And I encourage you to question them and to actually see or just question that question if that is really true. If that is really true. Because a lot of what we think is true and absolute is not. It's just what we have been told and programmed for so long. And then, of course, we see proof of it everywhere. And when we see any proof that goes against it, we say, that's not true. They're liars. Like Victor, like, um, Victor Triviano, the breatharian. You know, people are always trying to catch him out of eating or drinking because they don't want to believe this is true because that would break down their paradigms. The other thing that I actually came on here to speak about, but it's kind of perfect segue, is the other paradigms that we're being taught, particularly in the, um, in the self-development world and the uh, spiritual, spiritual world, is that there are these systems and practices that know more than what we do about ourselves. Astrology is the most um, prominent one, and it's not just in a spiritual world, it's also in very con- in a very conventional world. And this is a system that tells us who we are. It tells us about our traits, our moods, what we should be careful of. It tells us what kind of a person we generally are. And of course, there's always room to move, but it gives us this foundation. And for me, I do not take anything like this seriously because I will not be told who I am based on a system outside of myself because that then cements that, that creates walls. And then I tell myself, oh yeah, well, that's who I am because I'm a Virgo. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm really, um, I'm really um, precocious around cleaning and keeping things neat and tidy because I'm a Virgo. No, I decide who I am. We have everything is possible. Of course, you know, this statement is thrown around a lot. We have to think about where we are right now and realistically what is possible for us and also our desires. Everything is possible in terms of our natural desires because if it's not natural for you to have that desire, then it's not possible for you. So this idea of when people say everything is possible, Well, if it's your natural desire, then yes, it is all possible. If it doesn't feel natural to you, then it's not going to happen. It's not possible for you. So for example, if you are a 40 year old male with a beer belly and you say, yeah, well, everything's possible. So I can be a Victoria's Secret model. Does that feel natural for you? I don't know. Probably not. (laughs) So that's not your, that's not going to be possible for you think everything is natural for you everything is possible for you when it feels natural mind you because of this dirt and this mark we have on on our us which is in the form of beliefs and programmings that are unconscious that we've just taken on being the truth that may cloud our natural desires and so things like living until we're 250 years old feeling fresh and sprightful that might not feel natural for us, but it's to ask ourselves, look a little deeper. Why does it not feel natural for us? Oh, because what I've been told, because all the proof I've seen around me, because of my grandparents, because of my parents. 
How would it feel natural for you? How about looking for expanders? These are people who are actually doing what you want to do. What wanting, I don't like this word, because wanting, wanting says I don't have, and then that comes from energy of lack. So I prefer the word desire because that's more of a drive. It doesn't, doesn't come from lack. It never comes from lack. It comes from something beyond fear. It comes from a divine spark of godliness or something in, if you don't like the word God, I'm going to use it all the time. So maybe don't listen to me. It comes from a divine spark within us that feels expansive. It doesn't come from lack. It doesn't come from providing us with these basic needs of safety. It comes from self-actualization. So these systems, you know, the other one is um, that people, especially, you know, the feminine, the, the feminine, which um, connecting with the feminine, you know, there's a lot about the moon because the moon is meant to be feminine. And um, this is also something that I, I don't do. I have always found it kind of naive or um, a little tripe to do moon ceremonies. I do it sometimes for fun with friends, but you know, you get to birth what you want to birth at any time. You get to let go of what you want to let go of at any time. Don't allow the planets or other systems to tell you when and when you can do things and when you cannot do things. You know, have a menstrual cycle is another one. You know, we're told what we should do when we're bleeding and, you know, do what feels right for you. It is, sometimes I have so much energy when I'm bleeding and so I work out and that feels great. And sometimes I don't, so I don't. And to use my own internal guide as my system rather than what I'm being told, it's the same with eating. Rather than eating at the same time every day and being like, oh, it's dinner time. What about if you checked in with your body and asked it when it's hungry and that to trust that it will give you a signal when it's time rather than doing it because that's what you've always done and that's the system that you've put in place. Um, there are so many other systems, but I want to go into the moon one because it's kind of interesting and this is just kind of fun. But um, I heard um, from my friend, Victoria, who's an amazing mentor um, as well. She, she mentioned something about the moon because I had recently always had my cycle on full moon. And two months ago, I said to myself, hmm, I actually said to my boyfriend, I'm going to move. I would like to have my cycle when I bleed on new moon instead, because then it's a little less, maybe it's a little less intense to have it on new moon rather than full moon. Two months later, I got my period yesterday, which was new, new moon. I didn't do anything. I just set the intention, but that intention came from deep within me and the how was irrelevant. It just happened. I did do some fasting in between, which delayed my period, but I didn't do the fasting to delay my period. And sometimes it doesn't delay it. So it just naturally fell into place with ease without the how. And that was because I set the intention and the, and the intention came from a natural desire within me. Anyway, I was telling my friend about this and she asked me if I'd heard of the inverse moon. And it's this idea, all the conspiracy theorists are gonna love this. It's pretty wild, but it's this idea that the moon is actually a, um, is, is actually synthetic. And it was, and we've been given the, and it's been put there to, take blood and eggs from women. And when women are doing these rituals to the moon, it's in fact to something a little ominous. So, you know, I've, I've always felt there's any kind of rituals to deities. Um, I mean, I, I, I do do them on occasion, but when I invoke them, I really feel it with inside of myself. Like I pull out that part of myself. So let's say it's Lakshmi, the, 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 um, the deity of wealth and, and prosperity. I will find that part of her inside of myself and invoke her in that way rather than feeling like it's something outside of myself. And any kind of ritual I do, I do for myself, not for some external entity or some external, um, you know, for the moon or for the sun or anything like that. Sometimes I'll do it for Mother Earth, you know, I, I give, I, I speak to her a lot, but, um, but that feels, it just feels right for me. 
So to really question these practices and these rituals that you do and just ask yourself, why am I really doing this? Is it because it's what I think I should do because of what I'm being told? And if it feels great and it feels real and it feels true, then continue on because these practices can enhance our um, self-actualization, can enhance our development. And I think it's always useful to set aside times to do intentions and visionings and be and it's a time that allows us to bring the unconscious to the conscious by actually reflecting and integrating what has come through over the period of time we're looking at so i think that it is it can be really amazing practices to use these systems more so to actually as a, as a time that we put aside to delve into ourselves um, and I think that's really useful. But any time for me that I am um, bowing down or ped pedestalizing something outside of myself, I just don't do it. You know, the only the only God that I think it's Rumi who said this um, said something like, "The only God." Uh, I'm going to butcher it, but he he said something about. It's really it's disempowering and it's disempowering and damaging if you believe in a God outside of yourself. And I totally I, I'm, I'm down with this. You know, we have the systems inside of ourselves. We have the direction inside of ourselves. And what it requires is us cleaning and uncovering to uncover what is actually. OK, that's it for now. Um, so great to be here and uh, I'll do another live soon. Oh, I've also opened up my calendar and I'm giving away free sessions. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be for, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. So if you want to book in, there's a link in my Instagram. This session is to dive into you and whatever it is that you are dealing with right now. If there's a particular block or if there's something you want to work towards, then we will uncover that together this is not a sales session however if you do want to speak about working together then i'll invite you to that conversation and you can say yes or no it's really no strings attached why am i doing this because i have so much energy now that i've really changed things um i've been cleaning myself out a lot and i'm just full of energy and i want to reconnect with you all because it's been a while since I have been really engaged, I've been really um, intimate with myself and now I'm, I'm really ready to be um, intimate with you guys. And um, yeah, jam together, you're also inspiring and I love the questions that I get and the messages and um, it really fuels me. And yeah, thank you so much for sharing so much with me. I'm often um, really honored by the depth and the vulnerability that I, I'm that is shared with me and I'm, I'm so honored to to hold hold that for you all right if you just joined please watch the replay I'm ending now and if you have any questions or comments pop them below and I will get back to you okay see you guys how do I end this oh my god it's been so long what do I do cross yes yeah, so